Hello there, friends. This is Seth of the Singus LPs, and welcome back to some more Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. In the last episode, I believe we got to this clock tower here. Well, I guess we did, considering I'm here, so I don't know how I should believe it, considering it has to have happened. Or, or maybe I just teleported here magically, and you guys have no idea how to get here. Who knows? Well, I guess I know, but still. And in this episode, well, we're going to... That is interesting. I always I wanted to point that out too because it happened in my practice run. It's like the gravity shifts when you're using a ladder, so you know the whole spider dragon thing going on. But because the gravity shifts, if you jump off the ladder, you're still like going vertically as if you're climbing, and it takes some time to switch. So interesting physics glitch there, but I guess it's because of the physics engine and the way it was programmed. Anywho, so if you continue up here to the top of the cog tower, I'm going to call it a cog tower, not a clock tower, you get to another sparkly door, and I guess that is what we are going to be doing in this episode, checking out what's inside the sparkly door, and by inside I mean continuously teleportationalizing inside this, this doesn't even make sense, but we are teleporting to a new world, and by a new world I mean somewhere else in heaven. The Puffy Palace is under attack! Please, save us from the battleships! Um, okay, this is not at all the kind of scenario I was expecting to teleport into, but, um... B7! No? No? No sunken battleships? Okay, I guess we're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way, then. Defend the Puffy Palace? Well, I suppose that's what I meant by old-fashioned way. Okay, so apparently they didn't voice act the part where they tell you how to use the Spitfire. They didn't even mention you were using something called the Spitfire, but I guess we're just assuming. G Spyro, maybe you're using the Fire Spitter. There's a big difference. Anywho, so you steer with the control stick, obviously. You press A button to fire missiles, hmm, and you press the X button to fire your machine gun. So apparently we have a machine gun breath and are, we're jumping things with the missile. I guess faire sauter something in French means basically to make something jump, and yet it also means to make something explode, so nice little fun fact for you. And press B to make the Spitfire fly faster, okay, B is faster, that's pretty standard. And the L and R buttons, bank left or right, basically a barrel roll. Alright, so I guess we will defend the Puffy Palace now. We are now physically capable of doing so. Holy crap, I was not expecting this. Alright. Let's do this. So yes, we are apparently defending the Puffy Palace. You can destroy the beds with... I thought you could destroy the... What? Okay, um, that didn't work out as well. I say just spam missiles at everything, including... Why are those beds invincible? How does that even make sense? Those airships destroyed the palace. How is there a next time? Apparently... You just said that the palace was destroyed. What the heck are we defending? Oh, this, this is crazy. Whatever, okay. Apparently we're doing it again. Um, yeah. So, I say don't bother with the beds, because apparently they're freaking invincible, man. Um, they can attack you, but all, all they're ever going to do is kamikaze you like that. So, so long as you can dodge them, I guess it's all good. That appears to be it. Those, those things are also shooting cannonballs at you, by the way. So this is a pretty stat. Ow! Jeez, learn to. S Am I flying backwards? Okay, I, I'll. Uh, what? What? Okay, I'm assuming that my. What the heck is going on? Okay, let's manage to try that again, shall we? Considering apparently our plane malfunctioned. Man, apparently this video game is realistic enough to have malfunctioning planes. And that guy so did not crash into me. I don't care what you say. He totally didn't. Anywho, so apparently the battleships are like these weird things, and by weird things, I mean... Whoa, this guy's trying to shoot us, but we're not gonna let him. I guess they do shoot at you, and that's probably why it seems like they're not actually colliding with me when they seem to hurt me. Uh, just go in circles like this, I guess, is the best way, because it does take a lot of hits to sink these battleships as it is. So... It's probably not the best idea to try to go for them all in one shot. This really reminds me of a few Crash Bandicoot style games um, uh, from Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex, you know, like the parts where you're in the planes and shooting stuff. So yeah, it's really a pretty standard concept for a PlayStation franchise, I suppose, to have this kind of thing, at least at the time. 
But enough about your PlayStation history lessons. Is this thing gonna die? Jeez, these... For what looks like this weird old-style flying Viking battleship, these things are pretty resilient to bombardment from old... old school. Yeah, because missiles are old school and Vikings are like the cream... Viking ships, yeah, they're the cream of the crop when it comes to technology. Anyways... Uh, okay, so I sunk three of them by now, so this is the last one. Yes, it... Ow. Jeez. Way to end it off on a bad foot. Puffy Palace is safe once again. This dragonfly was taking shelter inside the palace. Here, you can have it. You mean the palace that got destroyed twice? Yeah, tons of shelter there. But I guess the palace is safe once again, so it just kind of like rebuilds itself. It's like a ghost palace now. Whatever. Hey, we got Tweedle. Tweedle, so who the heck cares if the palace is rebuilding itself? If you'd like to try shooting a few more battleships, I'm sure there's a few more out there. Oh, I'm sure, but you know, it's, it's, the, the palace can destroy itself. Why would I have to defend it? I mean, apparently it can just come back to life after it gets destroyed, so... I guess this is heaven after all, so the violence has to be offset by anti-violence spells. I don't even know. Defend the Puppy Palace? No, we will not defend the Puppy Palace. Yeah, okay, so... I guess we have completed the defense of the Ghost Palace, and now we are returning on our merry way so that we can defend more Ghost Palaces. Oh, Spyro, you participate in some of the weirdest odd jobs. Anywho, so now there's not really much else we have to do in here other than a quick little something that... I hope I can remember where the heck you're going when you do this, because this is actually not the easiest. It's, it's kind of easy to miss as well. Like, they really did a good job with the whole co clock... Co never mind. Clock tower thing and how hard it is to actually figure out where you're going. So, there's actually an exit from here, but if I recall correctly, it's an exit from somewhere else. I believe up there. And it will get you onto a balcony that will contain the fired... Yeah, the balcony contains a dragonfly. I don't know where that is, though, because, honestly, it's kind of hard to find. Hmm, now I'm confused. I'm pretty sure it's not up there. There could be just another... It could just be outside, but I, I doubt it. I'm Now I'm really confused. It couldn't be the way we just came, could it? What is this magic? Um, well, it's a magic door, and I don't want to go save more ghost palaces, so, you know, I'm going to fall all the way down. That's a beautiful spiral. And head out here, I suppose. Um, yeah, you just... Okay, yeah, you just fly out on this side. And, oh, he's hiding right here. For some reason, I keep... I always thought that there was another door in there somewhere that led to it, but whatever. At least this guy doesn't run away, even though he clearly has room to run away. Hey, it's Mar I guess Margaret's is just a nice person. You know what? You're gonna have a good job. And anyways, now we have caught all ten slaves, um, I mean saved all ten dragonflies from this little awesomeness that is Cloud9. Which sadly means we must leave this heavenly world behind us on our way to a more or less heavenly -er list place. Yes, that was not contradictory at all. And another thing, if you missed the first sparkly door that we went into to get to the speedway from hell, which was not actually that hellish, you can just fly down there from here, so you don't actually have to do it earlier on, but I don't know. To each his own, I suppose. So let us continue on to the exit of this level and return to the Dragon Realms, where we actually have something to do, as we do have a rune. So maybe we'll go visit Mr. Alcohol Dragon, um, I mean Spirit Dragon. Let's go! Back to the Dragon Realm! Oh, okay, so we're back up here, and... Oh, hey, Mr. Bear went up in the swirly thing and left us behind all alone with only sheep to talk to. Yeah, we're now a lonely shepherd dragon. Oh, I mean, we do have a ton of dragonfly slaves, so maybe they can talk to us from time to time. Keep us company, you know? Anyways, I suppose that'll end it for this episode of Enter the Dragonfly. In the next episode of Spyro Into the Dragonfly, we will head over to Mr. Alcohol Dragon over there. And he is going to give us some ice breath. Okay, apparently apparently in breath mints, there's like 
I, I don't even know. There's apparently alcohol in breath mints in this world, and the breath mint shall make our breath very chilly. Very chilly indeed. And you'd, th you'd think you'd need alcohol to spit fire, but no, it's the only thing we didn't have to ask the alcohol dragon to teach us how to do. Huh, weird. Anyways, in the next episode of Spyro into the Dragonfly, all this will happen, and I will see you guys then. So, well, peace out.